PCs are hot, loud, ugly, and power hungry. This is why Macs are the greatest computers on the planet and why Apple is the... Hang on, I don't remember writing this. Tim, I told you to stop editing my scripts. F*** you. Okay, in all seriousness, Macs are pretty good, especially the most recent Apple Silicon Macs. And yes, some PCs are hot and loud, but one of the most common points of difference regarding the great Mac versus PC debate is that you can typically get a much more powerful PC for a much cheaper price than a Mac. But seeing just how insanely powerful these new Apple Silicon chips are, is that still the case? Well, let's find out. Currently, the most powerful Mac device is the M1 Ultra Mac Studio. Now, I made a video comparing it to an equivalently priced Mini ITX PC build, featuring powerful components like the Intel i9-12900K and RTX 3080. Now, I got some comments saying that it wasn't a fair comparison, that I shouldn't have used DDR5 memory or Mini ITX form factor, for example, to save money. Even though, in terms of pure specs, it was as similar to the M1 Ultra Mac Studio as you could get at the time. I mean, Apple Silicon Macs do use DDR5 memory. Also, PC components, GPUs specifically, have been marked up quite a lot recently due to the pandemic and current global situation. So to answer the question that this video asks, I went out and built the most powerful and most cost-effective PC build that I possibly could. Here's the build list and prices. Remember, we're comparing this PC against the base model M1 Ultra Mac Studio with 48 GPU cores and 64 gigabytes of RAM, which costs 4,000 US dollars. Now, I did leave out the 10 gigabit ethernet adapter here because most people won't need it, but it can be added in later at any time. The Mac Studio comes with a 10 gigabit ethernet port as stock. If you're asking why I'm not comparing a 3090 with a maxed out M1 Ultra with 64 GPU cores instead, well, the answer is I've already sold both my kidneys just to afford these. Because don't forget that upgrading the M1 Ultra to the 64 GPU core option is an additional 1,000 US dollars, which is a lot of money for not that much performance gain. Okay, let's break these parts down a little further, starting with the GPU. Now, when I made my previous video on this topic, GPU prices were still pretty high, but pretty much just after I posted that video, they dropped significantly. Now, an RTX 3080 or 90 will smoke Apple Silicon in a lot of workflows, like 3D work or gaming, for example, because they are more optimized and the PC can simply suck up more power. Now, there are some side effects to this, like massively increased fan noise and thermal output from the PC, but like I'll show you later on in the video, this can actually be improved quite significantly. Now, for the CPU, I went with the Intel 12900K. Yeah, you can usually save a little money by going with the non-K version, but at the time of this video, they were all the same price, about 560 US dollars. Also, in my last video, I went with DDR5 RAM on a DDR5 compatible motherboard, but looking into this further, DDR5 really doesn't have that many benefits over DDR4, despite the massive difference in price. So I decided to go with a cost-effective solution of a DDR4 LGA1700 motherboard paired with 64 gigabytes of DDR4 RAM at almost half the cost of the combo I used in my previous video. Moving on to form factor, I wanted to keep the size of this PC build relatively small because I don't think it's fair to compare a full-sized ATX build to something with such a tiny form factor like the Mac Studio. In my previous video, I used the A4 H20 from Lian Lee, which is a tiny case, but a little pricey and restrictive in terms of airflow. Enter the NR200P from Cooler Master. I was able to pick up this case for just 70 US dollars on sale, and the airflow is phenomenal. With a 12900K hooked up to a 280 millimeter AIO and an RTX 3080, I was able to keep temps almost as cool as my full-sized ATX case. Sure, it is a little bit tricky to build in being a mini ITX case, but honestly, most of that difficulty was due to the motherboard VRMs and also just the massive heatsink of the RTX 3080 graphics cards. Seriously, check this out. The red card is a GTX 1080, and the huge slab of metal on the other side is an RTX 3080. Just two generations apart, but almost three times bigger. And this brings me to my next point. Typically PCs, although more powerful, 
are much hotter and louder than something like the Dead Quiet Mac Studio. But with a little bit of customization, you'd be surprised at how cool and quiet this PC can get. Firstly, the 140 millimeter fans that came with my Corsair AIO and also the top exhaust fans on the NR200P case are good, but I had some Noctuas laying around. The Noctuas did make a difference in terms of noise reduction and cooling ability, but honestly, not much over the stock fans. What did make a difference though, was taking the time to test and create custom fan curves. After tweaking these, my PC is now as silent as the Mac Studio when doing anything but intensive tasks like gaming or rendering a video. And even then, the noise is noticeably reduced. Next, I also undervolted my RTX 3080 slightly and was able to knock off about 5 degrees Celsius from peak temps, reduce fan noise significantly, and reduce power draw by roughly 70 watts while not seeing any noticeable performance drops. Now, you can do the same to the 12900K, but I didn't bother because most of my workloads are GPU heavy, and when I am using the CPU, it doesn't get that hot anyway. So what's the result of building a super powerful PC for just over half the price of Apple's most powerful Mac? Well, if you want to see benchmarks and a full performance comparison, make sure you watch my previous video on this topic. Sure, that video features slightly different components and DDR5 RAM instead of DDR4, but the results are essentially the exact same. This PC comes very close or even exceeds the M1 Ultra Max Studio in almost every single area, such as After Effects, Photoshop, video editing, timeline scrubbing, rendering 4K and 8K video, etc. But the PC really shines in areas like 3D modeling and gaming, where it utterly destroys the Mac. Again, for just over half the cost. And like I mentioned, it runs a lot quieter and cooler than traditional PCs, but to be fair, nowhere near as quiet and as cool as the Mac Studio. Seriously, CPU temps on the Studio barely reach 70 degrees Celsius, and I've never heard the fans go off. And the form factor, although pretty small for a PC, is nowhere near as compact as the Mac. You also get all of the traditional pros of going with a PC instead of a Mac. For example, modularity. I can add multiple NVMe SSDs at once, or I can swap the GPU for a more powerful one in the future, or I can swap the case and motherboard for something larger and add more parts via the PCIe slots. The options are limitless. Now I do understand that there are a lot of pros and cons to both platforms, including hardware and software, but most comparison videos I see are people comparing a full-sized ATX PC build with a MacBook or a tiny Mac Studio. There's no custom fan curves or undervolting or even similar form factors. And I think the fact that you can build and customize a PC to look and perform in this way just goes to show how versatile the platform is and also shows the massive leaps in performance that Apple Silicon has introduced to the Mac lineup. But apart from that, guys, hopefully you enjoyed this little comparison video and I'll catch you in the next one.